To use the body strengthening pills, one has to dissolve two of them in 10 milliliters of hot water. After five minutes, the solution has to be frozen till it forms an ice cube. Then, it's melted and warmed to a room temperature. It's only then that the solution can be taken. He completely couldn't understand what was wrong with the prescription. It was just to dissolve the pills in water. What was the use of using hot water, then freezing the solution, only to warm it till the solution was at a room temperature? System, what is the use of the roundabout process? Won't the end result be the same, the room temperature solution? Jack asked. That is just so as the pills can't be used by just anyone. In this way, you can control the number of people that can use the pill. In other words, even if those scientists stole the pill from you, they won't be able to use it unless you tell them the prescription. Jack was at first stunned. Then he thought that the system was really thoughtful. It had already thought of a way of making sure that nobody stole the reward that he had received after working so hard in the ultimate championship. But what was the use of all of this? Why not just say that it needed to be dissolved in a special liquid? The procedures are not for nothing. The hot water is used to activate the properties of some of the ingredients that are used. Then, the freezing will also activate another property. Melting the ice cube before warming it to room temperature will make sure that all the properties are merged. So, the recipe is incomplete. Jack guessed. Without the prescription, it can be said to be incomplete. Jack shook his head and decided to focus on what could be done at the moment. To make sure that the effects of the pills are maximized, the one that takes the solution has to make sure that he she does intense workout. In this way, the cells in the body will be active in the absorption of the pill properties. That was the last sentence on the two paragraphs long prescription. After he was done with it, Jack decided to test it. He had come with all the pills that were produced in the first batch. There was a total of 216 pills. According to Walter, they had produced 250 pills in the first batch. All the others were used for the testing that led to a failure. The 216 pills, if he divided two per person, he could strengthen 108 people. Thinking of the squads that were supposed to be formed, Jack clicked his tongue just thinking of the number of people that would be stronger than the normal human adults. To test the effect of the pills, Jack decided to test them on Jonathan. He was currently in a weakened state. Perhaps the pills could help him with that. But currently, Jack had a problem. How was he going to measure 10 milliliters of water? Considering that he was currently in a hotel room and not in the laboratory, there was nothing that he could use. After thinking again, he simply decided to buy a measuring cylinder. It took him about half an hour to find a store that sold the laboratory apparatus. All the same, having another idea, Jack decided to buy an even bigger measuring cylinder, a beaker, 50 small glass bottles, and a dropper. When he got back to his room, he began the trial. He followed the steps and finally, after more than an hour, he had completed the preparation of the solution. He went to the living room of the suite and called for Jonathan. This guy was simply playing games instead of doing something constructive. Jack then gave him a small glass bottle that contained the body strengthening solution. Jonathan took it and looked at the small amount of colorless liquid in the bottle. He wondered what it was. He opened the cap and took a whiff but he couldn't smell anything. Why are you acting like a cat, trying to smell something before taking it? Drink it already. Jack complained. Hey, I don't know what this thing is. So why would I simply take it? Jonathan looked at Jack with a dissatisfied expression. You have to drink it because I'm the one that gave it to you. Jack stated with a straight face. Looking at Jack's expression, Jonathan became serious. What is this thing anyway? Body strengthening solution. Jack replied without hiding a thing. Hey, you mean that this is the solution of the same pill that you carried from the lab? Hasn't this thing been ineffective? Or are you trying to use me as a lab rat? Jonathan looked at Jack with a strange expression on his face. Just take it. If you don't want, you might as well give it back to me so that I can give it to another person who knows how to appreciate other people's kindness. Jack snorted as he stretched his hand to take the bottle away from Jonathan. Jonathan reacted fast and gulped the small amount of liquid in the bottle. And not long after that, he felt a warm current rushing through his body. He was just about to question what was happening when he suddenly felt that the strange poison that was previously restricting his strength being destroyed. What followed that was that he felt that his strength was returning to him. What surprised him the most was the fact that not only had his strength returned to the peak, it had also been greatly enhanced. This showed him that the solution that he had taken wasn't something simple. He clenched his fists to test his strength. Feeling the explosive power that was hiding in his muscles, Jonathan felt that he could crush a military armored car with a single punch. He was feeling restless. He really wanted to vent his excess energy. 
Still, he managed to suppress the feeling. He looked at Jack and asked, How come it's now functioning now? Could it be that you have found the solution? Jack nodded. It's already solved. So, how are you feeling? Any abnormality? Jack asked. You were strange. Jonathan stated, making Jack fail to understand what he was meaning. As for the abnormality, I feel like I can fight a thousand men right now. I have completely recovered and now, what is left is to try the strength. As of now, compared to an adult, how many times stronger do you think you are now? Jack asked. He wanted to know by what degree the solution increased a person's strength. I feel like I'm three and a half men combined. Jonathan stated, I know that there is nothing like half a man. So, just take it as if an adult is 100 kilograms. A half will be 50 kilograms. You should try to practice. There should be a good amount of the energy of the solution that has yet to be absorbed by your body. So, you should try doing something intense. Jack suggested. M.H., how about fighting you? Jonathan asked as he looked at Jack. He wanted to know just how strong Jack was. If we fight, you are no match for me at all. So, the fight will be boring. Jack shook his head and refused. It wasn't that he was bragging. Instead, he was saying the truth. While Jonathan was three and a half men combined, Jack was five adults combined. You are actually looking down on me? You don't dare to fight me. Jonathan looked at Jack with a displeased expression. Being told that he couldn't fight Jack when he hadn't even tried was something that he couldn't accept. Every man had his own pride. Seeing that Jonathan seemed not to believe him, Jack shook his head helplessly. He decided to have a fight with him. In this way, he can make sure that Jonathan can fully absorb the energy present in his body. Additionally, he might as well use this chance to teach him a good lesson. After all, this guy had been provoking him over and over again. Why not fight on the roof of the hotel? Jack suggested. Seeing that Jack had agreed, Jonathan snorted before walking towards the door. Jack silently followed behind him. When they got to the roof, Jack and Jonathan stood 10 meters apart. They had each other's movements locked in that they would be able to react as long as one of them made a move. Getting impatient, Jonathan made the first move. Currently, he was so confident that he could beat Jack. The energy in his body was something that needed to be vented and Jack would be a good place where he could vent freely. He took two steps forward before punching. The explosive power that was contained in the punch surprised Jack a little. This was actually the first time that he was going to fight someone who was as strong as Jonathan. In any case, he wasn't worried. He lifted his right hand and easily parried away the punch. The first thing that he wanted to do was to help Jonathan completely absorb the energy. So, he decided to let Jonathan be on the offensive. Seeing that his punch was ineffective, Jonathan threw another one. But just like before, Jack easily parried it to the side. This made Jonathan feel like his pride was being challenged. So, he began throwing one punch after the other, not giving Jack time to relax. He increased the speed and power behind each punch. But for some reason, Jack was always able to parry his attacks. Getting frustrated, Jonathan increased the frequency of his attacks again. It was also at this point that he noticed that with each punch, his strength was increasing. And so, he forgot about not being able to hit Jack and completely focused on throwing the jabs one after the other. Jack wasn't flustered at all. He continued entertaining Jonathan more. Till now, he had yet to attack even once. Just like that, 20 minutes went by. Jonathan was already sweating from the continuous punches that he had thrown. At this point, Jack realized that Jonathan might have completely absorbed the energy. Flashing a smile, he first held the fist that came before holding the other in his other hand. Just as Jonathan was wondering why his hands were stuck, Jack used his knee to hit Jonathan in the stomach, waking him up. Being suddenly kneed in the stomach woke Jonathan out of his world. Jack released his hands and Jonathan hurriedly retreated. Now, he began focusing on the fight. Previously, he had simply been attacking, forgetting that this was a fight where he could be hit. Jack's lack of offense had made him completely submerge in the state where he only thought of attacking. Now that he could focus, he noticed that of all the punches that he had thrown, None of them had actually managed to land on Jack. Not feeling convinced, Jonathan attacked. This time, he made sure that he was ready to defend any strike that came from Jack. He threw a kick this time. Since punches didn't work, he decided to try kicking. Perhaps he would actually be able to land a hit on him. But against his expectations, Jack didn't stand there. He took a few steps backwards and evaded the kick. Jonathan, who had expected that Jack would actually parry the attack, was caught unprepared. So, the force that he had thrown the kick with made him lean to the side. At the same time, Jack made a move. Just as Jonathan was trying to gain his footing, a punch arrived, 
heading straight for his face. Surprised, Jonathan instinctively reacted and raised his left hand to block the attack. When the fist landed on his hand, he felt a great deal of pain as he was pushed backwards. He didn't expect that Jack's punch would be this strong. Although he had misjudged Jack previously, that didn't mean that he was not a fighter. Instead, he was someone that had undergone several life and death fights. So, his combat experience was high. Now that he had taken the fight serious, he dared not make a rookie mistake like the one that he had made when he tried kicking Jack. The two attacked, defended, and evaded attacks one after the other. But if there was a person that was watching the fight, they would find that Jonathan was at a great disadvantage. He was being suppressed by Jack as time went on. This was basically due to the fact that Jonathan had spent a lot of strength when he was attacking Jack at the beginning. And now, he wasn't having the same momentum as at the beginning. Jack was maintaining the strength and speed of his punches. He made sure that he didn't use much strength lest he badly injured Jonathan. Still, he enjoyed the feeling of suppressing Jonathan. This was the sense of satisfaction that came from the fact that Jonathan had been messing with him all this time and Jack had no way of paying back. So, this was his opportunity. On the other hand, Jonathan could feel that Jack was playing with him. He felt that no matter what he did, he was bound to lose. But all the same, he was unwilling to give up. He was the one that had suggested that they had to fight. So, he wasn't going to be the first one to submit. But as time went on and more and more of Jack's attacks landed on him, Jonathan had no choice but to agree that he was no match for Jack. Now, both of his eyes had already turned black. The cheeks had already swollen. In other words, Jack was simply beating him up. This was not a fight at all. I have something else to do. So, goodbye. Jonathan said before he ran off. Jack, who was preparing to attack again, was stunned. He never expected that Jonathan would actually run away. What thing did he want to do? He was simply giving up, and he wasn't willing to say loud that he was admitting defeat. But at the end of it all, Jack was amazed by the strength that he had gotten from the professional combat ability. Not only was he good in terms of strength, he was also good in terms of techniques and knowledge. In other words, he was just like a person that had experienced several fights in his life. So no matter how strong Jonathan was, and no matter how many fights Jonathan had been engaged into, he would never be able to compare to Jack in terms of experience. Shaking his head, Jack decided to follow Jonathan back into the suite. Since he had already tested the efficiency of the body straightening pill, he might as well start preparing the solution for the other 20 that were already here in Cardinal Supreme Hotel. After getting back to his room, Jack used to the big measuring cylinder to measure 200 milliliters of water and poured it into a beaker. After that, he took 40 body strengthening pills and dissolved them inside it. Then following the procedure that was in the prescription, he prepared another body strengthening solution. After that, he measured 10 milliliters of the solution and poured it into 20 small glass bottles. With everything done, he gave Klein a call and asked him to come to pick up the solutions. About five minutes later, Klein arrived. Jack handed him the solution and instructed, Each one of you will take a single bottle. Drink the solution inside and make sure that you go to train immediately after you've taken it. Although he was confused about what Jack had given him, he still decided to obey Jack's order and headed back to his room where he called for the others to come and join him. He gave them the solution and gave them the same instruction as Jack had told him. And just like him, they too were confused and none of them could tell what it was that Jack had given them. Do you think that this is one of those illegal drugs that have been banned? One of them asked. Why do you think so? Another asked. Don't you think that it's strange that he gave this thing to us and said that we had to take it when we were working out? The first guy said. It does make sense. But what is the use of that kind of drug? I don't think that boss is that kind of person. Why would he want us to use illegal drugs? Another guy refuted. In any case, I trust that boss will not give us something that will end up harming us. The private team has just been formed. And considering that he said that we are of great use to him, that means that he has no intention of doing us harm. Klein stated, That's right. Just think about it. If we think that this is a drug, we might as well quit the private team and head our own ways. It's not like he's going to force us to continue being his subordinates. The group went on to think about what Jack might be intending to do. There were some among them that were reluctant to drink the solution. But in the end, since the majority of the group had decided that they would take the solution and that they trusted Jack, this group of minority also agreed to follow. The following morning, the group went to a nearby gym. Immediately after they were ready to start working out, they each drank the solution that Jack had given them. They did this in private. At that exact moment, they felt that their strength had gotten a drastic increase. 
They were just normal men and women before taking the solution. But now, they were extremely strong. These guys finally understood why Jack had stated that they had to work out immediately after they had taken the solution. So, they each went ahead to do the activity that they thought would help them vent the excessive energy in their bodies. Some used the treadmill and ran at their maximum speed. Others went to the dumbbells and began lifting and so on. In other words, they each did something that they thought they could manage. Those that were watching from the side were amazed by this group of people. They stopped practicing and focused their attention on them. Some even began recording their actions. What do these people eat? Right? Do we even eat the same things? Hey, have you noticed that just one of them here can break the world record? Now that you mention it, it's true. Biggie, didn't you say that you were the strongest person in the gym? Why don't you go ahead and defend your position? Man, there are times that we have to agree that we are no match for others. Don't you know that there is always someone stronger than you? What the heck? Is that a woman? It's only now that you are noticing it? Yeah. I had simply thought that all of them are men. Who knew that there was a woman amongst them? There are two of them, not one. Why are you acting as if this is normal? My wife is like that. She always beats me up whenever we have a fight. TSK, who said that your wife is strong? It's just that you are so weak. You can't even lift the least heavy weight in the gym for 10 reps. You are talking as if you can compete against the women there. As the crowd that was watching continued to clamor on how strong the 20 men and women were, the ones that were at the center of attention were not even paying attention to them. They were now feeling their strength being elevated to a higher level. The more they worked out, the stronger they became. Furthermore, it wasn't just an increase in strength. They were also having an increase in their speed, endurance, and so on. They felt that the bones in their bodies were being strengthened as well. After over half an hour of intense workout, the group finally stopped one after the other. The group could feel that they were now tired, and the only thing that they wanted to do at that point was to get a good sleep to relax. So, without caring about the crowd that was trying to talk to them or ask them questions about how they got this strong, the group walked out of the gym. The good thing was that, the gym wasn't that far from the hotel. So, they easily got back to their rooms and fell on their beds without caring that they had to take a shower first. Jack didn't know the effect of the solution on the 20. Currently, he was thinking about what he was going to do to make sure that the group would get trained. Being strong wasn't enough for the group to be part of the private team. They needed more than that. Jack decided to ask Tracy if there was someone present in the company that could train people. He didn't want just muscles. Skills were very important. So, the 20 still had to go and train their skills and how they were supposed to react in specific situations. Hello, boss. Tracy responded. How are things on your side? Jack asked. They're going well. By next week, the merging should be completed. Tracy replied. That's good. Anyway, is there anyone who is training the guards? Jack inquired. Yes. There's one that was in the army before. After he got injured, he couldn't continue staying there, and so, he decided to come and do something simple. He now trains the special guards that always take on the bodyguard duties. Tracy explained. Okay. I got it. Inform him that I would like to send people for him to train them. They should be trained in all means possible. Jack stated. I'll make sure to pass the information. Tracy agreed. Okay then. They will be coming on a helicopter. You can organize and see what side requires it the most. It will be convenient for the emergency response to be moving around with the helicopter. Jack added. Tracy was pleasantly surprised that Jack was giving them a helicopter. One had to remember that all the money that they were earning during the month was actually being used by them to expand the company. That was what Jack had decided on during the previous visit. So, all the revenue that was earned during the month was used as capital that was injected into the company. She had also planned to buy a few helicopters using the money. Although it was true that they already had a few of them, it was also true that they were not enough to serve the company whose branches were spread out to other cities. Boss, we still have a good amount of money. We can use it to buy several helicopters. There's no need for you to give away your personal helicopter. Tracy tried persuading. Worry not. This helicopter is special. There will be a total of three, but two of them will be delivered once the merging is completed. Jack insisted. Okay. Tracy agreed. Since Jack said that it was special, she had no choice but to agree. But in her heart, she didn't think that there was anything special with the helicopter. After all, what could be so special about it? In any case, she could only wait and see what was so special about it and that Jack thought that it was. So, after she agreed, she asked for the number of the people that would be going to the headquarters and ended the call. 
Jack was now relieved that there was actually a person that could train the 20 in terms of skills. And if possible, Jack wanted to get this person who was from the army to also join a private team. It was just an injury. Jonathan's poison had been healed by the body strengthening solution. So, Jack believed that it wasn't impossible to have the injury that he suffered to be treated as long as it wasn't losing a limb. As for whether he would join, that would depend on him and Denali. If Denali thought that he was good to join, Jack would immediately invite him to join. If he agreed to it, Jack would definitely give him the body strengthening solution. Now, he had only spent 42 pills. There were still 174 pills remaining. What's more, there was another batch that was being produced. And once that came as well, the number of pills in his hands would be enough for him to strengthen a big number of people. The efficiency of the pills was so high. But what was up with how easy it was for them to be produced? The ingredients were very cheap and most of them were easy to find. That's how the medicine is. The ingredients are always available. It's just that people don't know that when you combine this plant and this grass you will get this effect. Furthermore, even if a person wants to try it, that person would have to start by trying to see the effect of combining two plant essence before finding the right ratio. All of this is too time-consuming. Jack nodded. This was why the research for medicine of a certain disease would sometimes take a few years or it might as well extend to decades before the results start appearing. Jack wanted the group that had been selected by Denali to start the production of the anti-leukemia pills as soon as they completed the second batch of the body-strengthening pills. In this way, he would start getting closer to the target that he wanted. He knew that monopolizing the medicine sector would be hard. What he was expecting from this side was simply the money. The money could then be used to develop other companies that had the least competition, and he would be able to complete one of the requirements for the system upgrade. You've earned $96 million. Multiplier applied. You received $9.6 billion. Jack was surprised by the sudden system prompt. He had not expected that there would be money coming in at this point. Now, the question was, where was the money coming from? This was the first time that the system wasn't mentioning the source of money if he wasn't the one that was actually carrying out the transaction himself. As if to answer his question, another system prompt appeared. First income from the Serenity residential area. As a reward, you gain the Eden residential building. Just then, the phone that he was still holding in his hand vibrated. Looking at the message that he had received from the bank, Jack sighed with emotion. Flyers Bank Savings Account received $9.6 billion. Current balance is $26,855,924,216. He was now already halfway towards the target, $50 billion. This was actually the first sale that had occurred ever since he actually got rewarded with the Serenity Residential Area from the bet with Austin and Venture City. Looking at the balance in his account, Jack could see the target was approaching. He wondered who it was that had purchased the villa. In Serenity Residential Area, there was a total of 30 villas that were up for sale. The villas were built according to a certain pattern and the price. There were five of each villa with the price tag. The villas were worth $20 million, $96 million, $105 million, $118 million, $130 million. These were 25 villas. Then, there were four villas that were worth $190 million each. As for the last villa that Jack had thought that he would take it for himself if there would be nobody who would have purchased it by the end of his one-month booking, it was worth $695 million. This was the most expensive villa in the whole residential area. And now, there were six villas that were sold before Jack took over the residential area. The five that were worth $20 million and one that was worth $96 million. Now, another purchase of a villa that was worth $96 million had been completed. Now that Jack thought about it, he was rewarded with the entire Serenity residential area. Its worth was estimated to be at least $3.8 billion. But, there were already six buildings that had been sold. Didn't that mean that he had actually been scammed of his six villas? System, where's the money for my six villas? Who said that the six villas are yours? You own 24 of the 30 villas in Serenity residential area. What the heck? Wasn't he rewarded with the Serenity residential area? Why was it that he only owned some of the villas and the others weren't? Didn't that reduce the value of the property that he owned? The villas sold are not counted. The villas that were sold can amount up to $196 million. On the other hand, although those that bought the villas owned them, as long as they get out of their courtyard, they are trespassing on your property. What you own are the 24 villas as well as all the other facilities that are present in the residential area. 
That means that even if you sell all the villas, you will still be considered the owner of the playgrounds, swimming pools, and other facilities that are available outside of the villas and the courtyards of the Serenity residential area. Jack finally calmed down. It turned out that the system wasn't scamming him of the reward that he was supposed to receive. Now, to the thing that he had just received, Eden Residential Building. Jack was still considered new in Cartus City. So, he had yet to know the names of most of the buildings in the city. The only solution for the moment would be to, for him to do a search and find what that building was. He found that Eden was actually a building with 50 floors. It was a three-bedroom apartment building. Currently, it had most of the apartments occupied. And the estimated price of the whole apartment building was $1.03 billion. This was a sky-high price. In other words, although Eden Residential Building wasn't the tallest building present in the city, it was still a luxurious apartment block. Jack thought that he was getting richer and richer. He then thought of something. System, will I have a reward from the first income from the apartment? No. You got the Serenity Residential Area as a reward from the system due to the multiplication effect from the bet. In such a way, it's the income that you received. As for the Eden Residential Building, that's a reward from the system. A reward from the system doesn't give you a reward, just the income multiplier. Had it not been for the fact that Serenity Residential Area was for sale before it was rewarded to you, the income coming from selling it wouldn't have been multiplied. Only the income like rent would have been multiplied. So, if you sell Glaze Hotel, you will be rewarded by a first-time income reward as long as the first month hasn't gone by. But, the reward that you will receive, even if you sell it, the income will not be multiplied. In other words, the system doesn't support you selling the rewards that you have been awarded with. Jack finally understood. After all, back then, although he had actually sold the building and the cars that belonged to Austin, there was no multiplier effect considering that he had already been rewarded by something that was a hundred times more after he received them. Could it be that now that Shanza wasn't there, people have finally began buying the villas or something? In any case, Jack decided that was going to pay the residential area a visit again. Just at this moment, a person knocked on the door. Not sure who it was, Jack got out of his room and opened the door. He found that Klein and the other 19 were waiting outside. The moment that they saw Jack, they all gave him a deep bow and spoke in unison. Thank you, boss, for the opportunity that you have granted us. Although he was surprised at first, when he heard their words, Jack finally realized that they were talking about the body strengthening solution that he had given them. He waved his hand and said, There's no need to be polite. This is one of the benefits that I had promised you guys when I was asking you to join the team. Now that you are strong, you still need some skills. So, you can go and prepare. You'll be heading to the headquarters of Good Vision Security Limited so that you can get trained. Hearing Jack's words, the group was stunned for a moment before they became ecstatic. They were just normal people who had decided to work as security guards for the Safety Enforcer's Security Company. In the end, they had been chosen to join the private team. Now, not only had their salaries been increased greatly, but they were stronger than average men, and we're now going to be trained in terms of skills and many more. So, they were excited. Not everyone could be given such an opportunity, considering that there were a hundred of them before they were selected. What's more, they didn't even know what it was that Denali looked for before choosing them. Thank you, boss. We will be preparing now. Klein stated. No problem. Gabriel will take you there via the helicopter. You will be training all this while unless I call for you. Your training may even take several months. In any case, you should just focus on training unless I need you to come. Jack added. After chatting the group for a while, they left. Jack then went back to the room. He was still wondering if he could get other teams to be formed so that he can at least have them trained as early as possible. But thinking that Denali was still in Crystal City, Jack shook his head. He would have to wait for her before he could implement that idea. Just then, his phone rang. An unknown number. Receiving it, Jack spoke. Hello, you are? Hello, Mr. Jackson. I'm Elvis, the manager of the Eden Residential Building. I was informed that you have taken over the building. So, I was inquiring if there are any changes that you would like to make. A man said. Thinking for a while, Jack decided that he would have to wait till Denali came so that such a thing could happen as well. Just continue doing things normally. I will see if there are any changes that can be made later on. Okay, boss. Elvis, who was quite nervous, was happy. Although he was the one that was in charge of managing the block, that didn't imply that he couldn't be replaced. Considering that Jack had just bought the building and he didn't know him, he might replace him with another person that he trusted. So, although it was for the time being that he wasn't going to be replaced, 
Elvis was more than happy because he could use this opportunity to impress the new boss. After ending the call, Jack got out of the hotel. He still wanted to stroll around the city to make himself familiar. Additionally, he wanted to buy an office building here in Kartu. He had wanted to have the headquarters of Jackson Enterprise and Venture City before. But looking at the bustling Kartu, he decided against it. Since this was the central location of the country, Jack might as well use it as his headquarters location. In this way, he could easily access the other provinces when he was expanding the business. For him to easily find an office building that was up for sale, Jack decided to visit a real estate agency. Not long after, Jack found a famous real estate agency that was called Property Masters. He got into the building that it was located. After asking around, he found that office buildings models could be found on the sixth floor. Taking the elevator, Jack finally arrived. There, he could see that there were several buildings models here. And from the looks of it, all of them were office buildings. Hello, sir. Would you like to rent a floor or an office? A young man walked over to Jack and greeted him. He was one of the staff members here. I would like to buy a building. Jack shook his head before responding. Caught off guard, the young man was silent for a moment before he reacted. This way, sir. There are several buildings that you can buy. He was clearly more than happy to lead Jack to the building models that were for sale. Most of the people that came here mainly wanted to rent a floor or a certain number of offices. It was rare to have someone that really wanted to buy a whole building. And although Jack looked young, the young man dared not to underestimate him. This was the capital. So, there were several young masters and ladies that came over to buy buildings. Most of the times, it was that they had been entrusted by their families because they were being trained. Jack looked at the models that were present. He found that none of them was up to his taste at all. They were just average buildings, and there was nothing special about them. Is there any big building that you guys are selling? Jack asked. Eh? That was unexpected for the young man. Jack was wearing average clothes. He was now beginning doubting if it was true that Jack could actually afford to buy the buildings or not. Perhaps he had seen that the prices of the buildings was higher than he had expected and was just looking for a way out? But although he was doubtful, the young man still led Jack towards another part of the floor. Here, Jack could see that there were models of several skyscrapers. He nodded in satisfaction. This was what he was looking for. So, he began looking at the building models as the young man went on to introduce them to him. It wasn't just the size and design of the buildings that Jack was looking for. He wanted to get one that was located in a good position as well. Just then, an arrogant voice came from behind him. Yo, if this isn't my cousin Jonathan. Jack's lips twitched when he heard that. It seemed that he had encountered a person that knew Jonathan. And from the tone of his voice, Jack could tell that the relationship between the two was definitely anything but good. Although this person could be said to be his cousin as well, Jack didn't think much of it. Apart from his Aunt Anita and Jonathan, Jack didn't want to interact with anyone else from the Jesta family. He wondered just how unlucky he was to encounter those people that didn't like Jonathan one after the other. He was here not long ago, but he had not encountered such a situation. Could it be that because he came with Jonathan this time, his luck had been diminished? What's even more infuriating was the fact that all the people that mistook him for Jack were not in good terms with him. Of course, that was apart from Wendy. Others, they were always wanting him dead or like this guy whom he wasn't sure what he wanted. Ignoring him, Jack continued looking at the models of the buildings. He didn't even turn around to look at the other party's appearance at all. The other party, on the other hand, wasn't ready to let this go. He continued, Where have you been hiding for over a year now? We have been looking around for you, but we found no traces at all. You know, I thought that you were scared of the competition and had decided to quit. The guy was making Jack want to beat him up. What's up with you? Can't you see that I have ignored you? Why the heck do you keep on pestering me like a fly? Don't you have something else to do? Seeing that Jack had yet to react even after all the taunting, the other party finally went silent. Jack was relieved. He went on with the selection. Finally, he found one that he liked. That is the Alpha Tower. It has 105 floors in total. It costs $2.3 billion. Each of the offices has its own rest area and bathrooms. The floor itself has an open space where people can interact. Each office is equipped with advanced level of technology in terms of lightning, recognition, voice control, and many more. The more the young man talked about the tower, the more Jack loved it. Okay, let's go and take a look. If it's good, I'll be taking it. Jack nodded before saying. The young man was so ecstatic. He had previously doubted whether Jack could actually afford the building. But when the other guy came over and claimed that Jack was his cousin, he believed it. After all, he knew who the person was. It was none other than Arthur. 
This guy had been here several times and had bought many villas for girls that he always came there with. So, if Jack was this guy's cousin, didn't that mean that he also had a good amount of money? Just thinking about the amount of commission that he would receive, the young man was in a hurry, wanting to lead Jack to the building as fast as possible. Ha ha ha, what did I just hear here? You? You want to buy that tower? Do you think that you can afford that price? You have been away from home for over a year now. Furthermore, even I cannot be allowed to spend such a big amount of money unless I spend it from my pocket. The person sneered. For the first time, Jack turned around and faced the other party. He found that this guy was someone who was older than him, probably 21 or 22. You are? Jack asked. He clearly didn't know this guy. You dare ask me such a question? The guy had veins popping out on his forehead due to anger. This was embarrassing. He had been talking about this and that but in the end, Jack was pretending not to know him. There were already several people present on this floor. So, when he was talking, he had already attracted a good number of people. He was intending to embarrass Jack. Who would have thought that Jack would be the first to embarrass him? I said I don't know you. So, please, don't go around calling others cousin when they don't even know you. Immediately after saying that, Jack walked away. The young man who had been introducing the buildings to Jack hurriedly followed him. Arthur, on the other hand, had a dark expression on his face. He thought for a while and decided to follow them. If Jack couldn't afford the building, he might as well use that chance to embarrass him. What's more, if it was true that Jack could truly afford the building, he might as well go ahead and ask his father to help him in buying it. In this way, he could anger Jack. Although he knew that his father might not agree to him spending money on buying a building if he had no use for it, he was sure that once he mentioned Jonathan, his father would be more than willing to spend. Additionally, this was a building. The price of the building would keep on rising as time went by. So, he might as well sell it in the future at a profit. Although he had to spend more at this time, it wouldn't be bad as he would soon earn his money back with a big profit in three to five years. Jack didn't know what Arthur was actually planning on. Even if he knew, he wouldn't care about that at all. The two of them got into his Lamborghini Urus after the young salesman took the keys and his identity pass. As he drove the car, Jack noticed that there was a car that was following behind him. He could already tell that it was the other guy who was following them. He didn't care whether that guy followed them or not. But as long as he dared to cause him trouble, Jack would be sure to make him know that he wasn't one of those people that were easy to mess with. Twenty minutes later, they arrived in front of a tower. This tower was cylindrical in shape. Even though the afternoon sun was hitting the floor-to-ceiling glass on the building, there was no reflection at all. It was like the glass could absorb the light from the sun. Jack nodded. Although he knew that this might lead to the increase in temperatures inside, he wasn't worried because there were air conditioners in such buildings. The tower had occupied a huge space. Furthermore, there was ample parking space outside added to another that was located underground. After getting out of the car, Jack saw that the car that had been following them had arrived. And after the other party parked the car, he alighted alongside the girl that he had brought along. Jack ignored him. It wasn't like he could chase him away because he had yet to purchase the building. It was still in the market and so, he could go and take a look and buy it as long as he wanted. The four entered the building without any scruples. Then, the young man began introducing the building to them once again. Jack couldn't help but be amazed by the level of technology here. In the elevator, there was no need to press buttons. Just mentioning the floor and the elevator would take you there. In other words, it was voice control. To enter the office, one had to register his information first. Then, the moment that the person arrived, the door would be automatically opened. The office could only be open to the owner of the building and the owner of the office. For the others, there was only a single additional person that could enter. That might be the supervisor or the manager. All of this depended on who it was that recorded his information. It was made in such a way that it would save electricity. Once the owner of the office left in the evening, as long as there was nothing left to do, everything would be automatically switched off. This included the desktop and the lights. So, it was advisable that if there was someone working on a document, he she had to save it before leaving. The more Jack looked, the more he was impressed. This alpha tower was impressive. He now wondered why it was that till this point there was nobody who had actually bought it. It's not that there are no people who want to buy it. It's just that they can't manage to. The one who developed the building stated that the building could only be sold as one unit and not in terms of floors. The young man began explaining. And, most of the big companies that might need a whole building already have their own. As for the new ones, they may not afford buying the building considering the price. 
Although it's true that there are those who can afford the building if they paid in installments, the developer wants it to be bought all at once. He doesn't want the case where he would have to start chasing after a person after that person fails to pay on time. Jack understood. It seemed that the developer was one of those paranoid people. He couldn't accept selling the building by having it sold floor by floor. And maybe he thought that although they might come to an agreement with the person who wanted to buy the building in installments, who could guarantee that the business of that person wouldn't collapse the following day. The business world was unpredictable. Anyway, Jack didn't care about that. He liked the building and could pay for it at once. After all, his balance was over $26 billion. Arthur, on the other hand, was amazed too. He had never cared about buying an office building. His family already had several buildings and he saw no need for him to purchase another one. But looking at the building and the level of technology here, he thought that it wouldn't be a loss to buy the building at all. Now, he didn't want to buy the building so as to anger and humiliate Jack again. Instead, he was truly tempted to buy it. Before Jack could say that he was taking the building, Arthur shouted, I'm willing to buy the building. No matter what the price is, I'm taking it. Jack looked at him with raised brows. He could still remember that this guy wasn't even paying attention to what the salesman was trying to explain when it came to the conditions of buying the building. Ah, uh, this gentleman here was the first one to ask for me to show him the building. The young man scratched his head not knowing what to do. What are you talking about? The building can be bought by anyone as long as he hasn't bought it. And as far as I know, he hasn't even agreed that he's going to buy it. Arthur sneered as he gazed at Jack. The young man found that this was reasonable. But he didn't know what to do in this kind of situation. Just as he was hesitating on what to do, Jack spoke. Let him have it. As long as he can afford it, there's no problem at all. As Jack spoke, there was a smile on his face. Even though this guy might be from the Jesta family, it wasn't like anyone from the Jesta family could fork out billions of dollars as long as they wanted. The Jesta family was rich, but that was mainly in terms of assets. What Jack was sure about was that they wouldn't be ready to affect their capital flow just to buy a building as long as there was no urgent need for it. Ha ha, see? I knew that you couldn't afford the building. Now you simply wasted this guy's time to come and do all that introduction. All of this was for nothing. Arthur laughed loudly. Jack didn't say a word to respond to his words. He simply stood at the side and waited patiently. Since I'm buying the building, why don't you scram from here? Arthur stated as he looked at Jack. You said it. Although you have agreed to buy the building, you haven't bought it yet. Just buy it before you can get the right to chase me away. Jack replied calmly. Humph. Do you think that I won't? Let me show you the difference between the two of us. Arthur said. He looked at the young man and asked, What is the minimum deposit? Deposit. The young man was dumbfounded. Didn't he just explain that the building had to be purchased in a single swoop? How come this guy was actually asking about a deposit? He's deaf at times. You should explain to him the conditions for purchasing this building again. Maybe he will hear you this time. Jack snickered as he said, You. Arthur was angered. He looked at Jack as if he was going to beat him up. But thinking that it would be better if he could embarrass him first, he looked at the young salesman and waited for the explanation. On the other hand, the young man thought that what Jack had said was true since the two of them were cousins. So, he went ahead and explained the same thing as he had told Jack. Eh? There's no deposit? You have to buy it all at once. Arthur was flabbergasted. He couldn't believe that there was such a condition. It was no wonder that the building had yet to be bought, although it was good. You can't afford it? Jack asked from the side. Humph, do you think that I'm like you? Arthur snorted before he took out his phone. He decided to call his father. He went on to explain that he was competing with Jonathan for a building and that he was short of money. Although the old man hesitated at first, when he heard the mentioning of Jonathan, he agreed immediately.